We have arrived at stability. Probably one of my favorite subjects or maybe areas of rocketry, of designing um, a sounding rocket. In this section, we're going to understand no. Understand why rockets are stable. Yeah, stability. Hmm. Why rockets are stable. We're going to see the dynamic response of a rocket when it when it finds a perturbation. So we're going to model the dynamic response of a rocket, of a sounding rocket, passively stabilized. This means, well, what happens if the rocket is flying happily and suddenly it finds wind? Crossover wind. So what's it going to do? So if we've probably, if we, if we've designed it properly, it's it's probably going to stabilize. It's going to turn around and and face the wind. If this angle is not too large, of course, which we call the angle of attack, we're going to take a look into that in a moment. But how's it going to How's it gonna how's it gonna oscillate? Okay, well, what's it gonna do? Is it is it gonna oscillate really slow? Is it gonna start moving and then moving back and doing really big oscillations? Or is it gonna just turn super quick and then face the wind? What's it gonna do? Um, so this is the dynamic response of a rocket when it finds a perturbation. We're also going to understand how to correctly design uh, a stable rocket. So after all, we're designing the airframe here on in, in stability. Um, so let's put correctly correct design in terms of stability. Uh, let's put a stable rocket. So it isn't, if you're familiar with modern rocketry, you'll see that they usually use something called, I think it's calipers or calibers, calibers, which is the distance between the center of gravity and the aerodynamic center. We're going to see this in, in a moment. So if this is a rocket, the fins are down here, shark fins. So stability starts and ends here. They look at which is the distance from the center of gravity to the aerodynamic center. This is a very poor way to see stability, but often it's just enough, you know, for the for the model rocketer that you know just wants to see a rocket and fly 100 meters it, it's all right no problem but we're gonna look into way way deeper detail the stability okay and in this section there's a lot of stuff that you're not gonna find in any books it's just stuff that I have derived uh, to understand in further detail stability and so we we're gonna take a deep look into stability okay and in this section and maybe we're also going to discuss for example why stratus 3 might have might have um, you know had an anomaly in the flight and and destroyed it was destroyed in in 20 sex after liftoff it, for the ones who are not familiar with stratus 3 this was um, this was a rocket that was designed and manufactured by Dare, which is a 
which is a student rocket group from TU Delft. These guys, these guys, uh, they they don't have the current record, world record for the highest flying sun rocket for students, but still these guys are the best, the reference of um, you know student student rocketry. So these guys. Um, I think it was maybe June or some. Well, last summer they they attempted to. I think Stratus three was shooting to eighty kilometers, not space. It could. I think the range was pretty wide. They, if they were lucky, they they would have reached space. So they, they weren't sure about which. Um, there was an uncertainty of the apogee, pretty big, I think. But they were they were aiming pretty high with this rocket. It, it, it I think it was a. 330 kilogram rocket, if I remember correctly, um, maybe 8, 8.2 meters or something like that. Crazy rocket, hybrid rocket. Well, this rocket exploded only 20 seconds after after it was launched. We're gonna see what happened to this rocket and what they may have done designing correctly. Maybe, maybe, but this is this is gonna be my theory. But um, yeah, we're gonna see. We're gonna see what might have gone wrong with the with that design, with an analytical um, with analytical analysis. Anali oops, we're gonna do an analytical analytical analysis. Of the of the variables of the design parameters to create a stable rocket. So th this part over here, yeah, it's 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 something I've derived, which I think is pretty interesting. So we can get like really nice conclusions out of this. It's the same I was talking about before. So the dynamic response of a rocket to a perturbation is crazy hard. I mean, th th there's no way you're gonna have um, a closed form analytical solution. Um, you can still simulate it. It's, you know, simulating it is, is definitely possible. And, um, um, but again, with a simulator, you can't have the feeling of, you know, what's going to make a rocket more stable. What's going to, you can't just play around with variables and, and get a feeling of what's going to make a rocket, you know, Respond this way or another way. So this analytical analysis um, is going to be pretty powerful, I think. And yeah, we might draw some conclusions of uh, from this analytical analysis of what happened to the Stratus three. And well, actually, maybe before we're gonna we're gonna model the corrective moments. So this is a talk that the rocket does to correct this path and and kill out the you know this angle of attack this perturbation. So to model a corrective moment, this after all what this means is modeling the normal force which we saw before and its point of application which is the aerodynamic center. So I hope with this introduction um this introduction motivates you to you know to go ahead and and you know watch these videos about stability with a little bit of you know excitement <laughs> so some parts are gonna require um, i mean it's it's gonna be nice if you know a bit of control theory. To understand dynamic response, it's not mandatory, but it's going to help control theory. Okay, so we're going to see that the rocket behaves like it's a second order, second order system. Second order system, and 
you see how a second order system behaves in normally in, in control theory or oh, well, yeah they sometimes call this different but um, it's not mandatory to understand the dynamic response but it's gonna help so just just a heads up and for the rest uh, you're just gonna be good with I don't know standard calculus just a feeling of physics nothing nothing special all right so good luck and let's go